we need to find the flaw in the argument made by the previous COO here. So let's understand what's going on here. See the current COO here starts by acknowledging favorable agreements with labor unions because of these aggressive negotiation tactics. However, the current COO suggests that these aggressive negotiation tactics while giving favorable agreements with labor unions have also antagonized the local government because of which there are many fines and fees being paid so much so that it would have been more profitable to let most of our attractions remain unused. So the current CEO is saying that although agreements with labor unions have been favorable, the local government has been antagonized because of which fines and fees have been so high that we would be better off without running most of the attractions. And to this, the previous COO rebuts by saying that consistent disruptions due to labor issues have been stopped because of which there is increased operational efficiency and because of such operational efficiency sees three new major attractions in the last two years could be introduced. So without looking at the answer choices, let's figure out what is the flaw in this rebuttal here. See the flaw is that the current COO is saying that we would have been better off without running the attractions because of the fines and fees being paid and the earlier chief is saying that new attractions could be introduced. What use are these new attractions if the premise is that we are better off without running these attractions? So the key flaw that we find here is not addressing the issue of fines and fees and not understanding that running the attractions has only been leading to loss. So more attractions would possibly mean more loss. Answer choice E hits the nail on its head by suggesting that the main flaw is not addressing the current chief's concern regarding the fines and fees levied by the local governments. It is because of these fines and fees that it would be more profitable to let most of the attractions remain unused. E is going to be the correct answer choice. Let's still look at the other answer choices. Answer choice A is incorrect in saying furthers the baseless presumption. This is not an assumption made in the argument and the previous chief did not further it. Answer choice A can be eliminated. Answer choice B is quite interesting. An alternate conclusion. The alternate conclusion can be around operational efficiency and introduction of three new major attractions in the last two years. And there has been evidence cited in support of this alternate conclusion. So not citing evidence in support of an alternate conclusion cannot be called the flaw here. Not addressing the key issue in the message here is what the flaw is. Answer choice E hits the nail on its head by saying does not address the current CEO's concern regarding the key issue here. Not establishing a definite causal relationship between improved efficiency and introduction of new attractions is not the flaw here. One, better efficiency can lead to broader operations. The causal connection is intuitive and it need not be definitely established. And the bigger problem is that introduction of new attractions has been of no use for the park because the current chief says that it would be more profitable to let most of the attractions not run. So these new attractions are matter of no pride. Not establishing a definite causal connection is not the flaw here. No, the previous chief does not presume that new major attractions will lead to theme parks profits. In fact, a flaw in his argument is that he is not worrying about profits. He is just worrying about operational efficiency and increasing the operations without worrying about profitability. So this is not a flaw here. Answer choice E by suggesting that the previous chief does not address the current chief's key concern regarding the fines and fees and because of which there is a lack of profitability is the key flaw in the argument. E is the correct answer choice.